Hello everybody and welcome back to what will be year 18, the end of year 18 actually, um, because we all know what happens during this month. We've got to take care of the Vertumnalia, we gotta do the coup, we gotta watch Utopia get her hand crushed, you know, just normal things that we're not allowed to influence. Utopia's hand getting crushed is a canon event, unfortunately. Miguel O'Hara would slay us alive if we tried to stop it, so we're just gonna have to watch. Ooh! Hey, wanna make something? You know I do! Nomi exclaims. I've had this great idea in my head for months! I wanna build something huge and I need your help! Nomi walks you through their plan to build their biggest thing yet. A massive dilly pillar float that you can carry on your shoulders using mushwood sticks to puppet it around and make it look like it's dancing. It's a huge hit, especially with the younger kids. You get a workout and you get to make something beautiful. Aww. <gasps> yes! We hit 100 friendship with Anemone! You go to the garrison looking for Nemi, but she finds you first, pouncing on you and wrapping her arms around your shoulders. Buddy, friendo, she exclaims. She leans in, smiling wide with barely contained energy. If I don't do something a little wild, I'm gonna go bonkers, she says, so you only you can hear. Everyone's so stressed out, and I feel like... She inhales and bites her lip. I feel like I gotta do something extreme. Like, I want to strip naked and climb to the top of the colony and scream until my brain makes me stop. Like I got bugs in my brain. So I got an idea, she continues, and I need you to come with me so I don't cower it out. Nemi leads you by the hand down one of the lesser used halls of the garrison until you come to a small room. Inside are two barber chairs and a table next to some dangerous looking but delicate machinery. A stout woman with a buzz cut looks up from reading something on her hollow pad. What's up, Anemone? Need that side shave freshened up already? Nemi shakes her head and grips your hand tight. No, I... I want a tattoo, she says. Can you do that? The woman gestures to dismiss her hollow pad and pulls out a thick book from behind the counter. You and Nemi crowd around it, marveling at the sight of real paper as it falls open to display a selection of tattoo designs. Used to be the only thing I'd do here is buzz cuts and military tattoos and hair dye for that Nomi kid, the woman says. But since we landed here, you haven't been the only person who's come looking for something a little more artistic, she smiles. Take a look through this and see what I can do. You and Nemi flip through the pages reverently. I was thinking, she says quietly, running her fingers over a circlet of thorns. I want something to remind me that Fortuna is my home, and everyone here is my people, to remind me why I fight. She shoots you a smile, uncharacteristically shy. I want something to link me to you, she says, looking away as her cheeks turn red. Out of everyone here, you're the person who means the most to me. Her eyes go wide. Nah, wait, we should get matching tattoos, she exclaims. Come on, what do you think? Yes, of course! Hell yeah, Nemi says, pumping her fists. What should we get? A book of tattoo designs lays before you. What do you want to get? Hmm. Mushrooms growing out of a human skull, suns to represent the twin sons of Vertumna, sword and a shield, each other's names, the stratospheric logo surrounded by knives. Uh, let's do the twin sons. Nemi slams her hand down on the book of designs. Yeah, hell yeah, she crows. That's perfect. Let's do it. Yeah. You sit down in the tattoo chair and bury your right arm. The tattoo artist slash barber transfers the design onto your skin and fires up the machine, which buzzes alarmingly. You and Nemi look at it, wide-eyed. Guess you kids have never seen the tech, huh? She says, preparing the gun. Tattooing's one of the oldest human arts, so there's not too much holograms and replicators can improve on it. The stuff I do here, it reminds us that even when we're out here among the stars, we're still just meat with thoughts. That's one way to put it. We'll tough our way through it. I actually had to do this recently. I recently got a half sleeve, and I was numbed for the beginning of it, but the numbing eventually wore off, and so, like, the next six hours was just me struggling through it, and then my phone died, so I couldn't really focus on anything else, so I was just staring ahead, listening to conversations around me, like, don't think about it, don't think about it, don't think about it. It smarts a bit when the tattoo artist presses the needle into your skin and begins her work, but you're pretty tough. Nemi looks a little green as the blood wells up around the needle and grabs your hand. This is so cool, she breathes as the bl design begins to bl blossom on your skin. It takes about an hour for the tattoo artist to get down the bold first strokes of your tattoo. Nemi holds your hand the whole time. When the artist steps away to stretch, Nemi leans in and gasps. It looks so awesome, Nemi says. This is the coolest thing we've ever done. This is galactic. She looks up at you. I meant what I said, she says, her voice a little wet. You're my best friend on this whole rock. Y y you've always been here for me. 
and I'll always be here for you, no matter what, thick and thin. Nemi sniffles, then looks embarrassed. Man, it's dusty in here. Aww. The tattoo artist returns and finishes up your tattoo, then moves on the Nemi. She takes it bravely, so she sometimes squeezes your hand so hard it almost hurts. Afterwards, you go back to your room to decompress and admire your bravery. Nemi flops onto your bed and you climb on after her, careful of your aching arm and your newly wrapped tattoos. I can't believe we did that, she crows, kicking her legs in the air. That was so awesome! She turns to you and pushes her unruly hair over her shoulder. Thank you for coming with me, she says seriously. I probably wouldn't have done it if you weren't there, and I probably would have done something reckless. She laughs, a brash and unashamed. <laughs> well, even more reckless. Of course, we're best friends. Nemi smiles toothfully at you. Sure we are. Smiles toothfully. I can't speak. You spot Vase leaning against the wall of the garrison, watching Nemi train with the others. Wasn't supposed to be like this, he mutters. Shit, man. I had everything. The friends, the clout, the perfect girl. What the hell happened? It's a crazy thing called the consequences of our actions, Vase. You should look it up. Anyway, here's a thing. Enjoy it. Because you can't enjoy your girlfriend because you don't have one anymore. <laughs> oh, I made that happen. <laughs> Alright, let's do some end guy nearing. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. Not end guy nearing. I need... Robotics. Robotics. Robotnik. Nomi Nomi is assigned to work with you in the robotics lab this month. At first you're happy for the help, but it becomes quickly clear that they're more interested in unreasonable fantasies like building a giant robot to defend the colony. I saw it in an anime, they chatter as you show them how to ground yourself before working with the sensitive electronics. It's totally cool. We just have to... Perhaps it would be better to master the basics first, nomination. Congruence pitches in smoothly. For example, there is a vacuum bot awaiting repairs to its intake and output valves. You know what? Without looking, it's Rosie! Yep, your problematic little buddy is sitting in the first bay. You pull up the work requisition on your hollow palm. Looks like there are reports it's been spewing dirt out instead of vacuuming it up. Typical. Not to worry, little buddy, Nomi says excitedly. We'll fix you up right away and get you on your way again. They peer into this into its sensors. Maybe with a few upgrades? If it's not blowing out dirt, maybe it doesn't want to be a vacuum bot anymore. They look at you, hopefully. Hmm. Oh, I'll get stuck with this one no matter what. Tell me about this anime defense robot. Nomi comes up with a little extra subroutine for it. If the bot likes to spew dust, what if it could set the dust on fire on the way out, making it a tactical flamethrower bot? It goes about as well as you'd expect. By the time you realize how highly dangerous this mod is, it's too late. The little vacuum bot is now an avatar of destruction, hurling great gouts of flame around the robotics lab. The fire suppressant system slams down on the Helios defense doors, trapping you inside the lab. The room fills with thick, bitter foam, and one the once vacuum bot fumes to a stop as congruence cuts its connection to her mainframe. Children, are you hurt? She exclaims. Please hold still. I have called for help. Nomi looks at you sheepishly. Whoops, they say, giggling. Okay, that one needs a little work. I am all for anarchy, and I think Rosie was too. That was hilarious. Nice. And now it's time for Vertumnalia. This year, Governor Lum's ascension to the Vertumnalia stage is heralded by an entire military band. Their instruments shiny and nano-printed new, they march out of command and formation, splitting and forming a thalanax at the foot of the stage as Lum takes his place before you. Spotlights turn on with a heavy ka noises, illuminating Lum in a halo of floating dust particles. He spreads his arms wide. Hello, Vertumna! His voice booms over the speakers. Are we winning or what? The reaction is mixed. You look around. It's easy to see the ones cheering the loudest are Helios and people who fully adopted their mentality, like Nemi. The Stratos are more reserved, some even silent. Security Chief Red is one of them, his usual stony expression hiding his true feelings. Regardless, there's enough people cheering that Lum has to wait for it to die down before he continues. We're killing it out there, people, he exclaims. Every day we claw a little more territory from the savage aliens of this planet. 
A potato pod arcs through the air and lands with a broken splort at Lum's feet, splattering him with juice. You don't see who threw it, but the faction from Geophonics is looking restless. They begin to jeer and stomp their feet. Lum continues, raising his fist. Those Xenos attacked us first, and now they're learning. Don't mess with humankind. The crowd is now evenly split between cheering and booing. The Stratos are agitated, and you hear calls for things to return to how they were, and how Lum and his soldiers are killing the planet. Even the council, lined up before the stage and facing the crowd, looks conflicted. We left Earth to get away from this shit, your dad shouts, and you turn to him in surprise. He rarely swears. Now look at us. We're right back to where we started, fighting each other in the planet. We brought it with us. Utopia hops up on stage and roots her own hear speak through the speakers. He's lying, she yells bitterly. This year we lost two surveyors in the swamp, Sorrel and Quinny. They'd be alive today if Lum hadn't sent them to clear out a manticore den for no good reason. She jams her finger against the governor's chest. The only threat to our colony here is you. Lum's smile doesn't change, but his eyes go cold. He snatches Utopia's hand and calmly, slowly crushes her hollow palm crystal with his thumb. You can hear the crunch of the bones of her hand before her feed cuts out. Utopia yelps as her knees buckle with pain, her bravado gone. She holds her broken hand to her chest and is too shocked to resist when Lum shoves her off stage. The crowd is stunned into silence as well. Lum clears his throat and approaches the end of the stage, looming tall over the council. Thank you for your input, he says icily. Your concerns have been noted. This isn't the buffoon Lum presents on his daily hollow vlogs, or the nuisance he is when he visits a work site. You see something in his eyes you've only caught glimmers of before. Hatred. You Stratos are lucky we didn't crush you under our boots and take your colony by force, he sneers. Before we got here, this colony was doomed. You're only alive because I was merciful. Just a bunch of burned-out hippie fugitives. What was your plan for surviving out here? Wishful thinking? Singing songs and talking to animals? Laughter ripples through the Helios. You, he gestures to the council, then jerks his thumb at his chest. Need us, not the other way around. I'm done pretending I need to listen to your opinions. If you want to live, you'll do what I say. He stares at Dr. Instance, who glares up at him with hate in her eyes as she tends to Utopia's hand. Maybe it's time to clean house, he threatens. We need team players here, ones who share the vision for the future of Fortumna. After a few tense moments, Seek clears their throat. Ahem, <clears throat> sir, shall I continue with the traditional formalities now? Lum scowls down at Seek, then throws his hands in the air. Whatever. Do it if it makes you feel better. You're all cowards. He turns and stalks off the stage, his marching band scrambling to follow him with his exit song. As promised, there are no contests this year, but there is plenty of food and alcohol. As the sun begins to set, the Helios, including Vase and Nemi, head straight for it and look ready to party into the night. The other te teens seem a little less at ease. Deese, quite predictably, has already left. Hang out with the Stratos. I'm trying to find uh, Nemi and, uh, freaking. Rex, I know you think he's evil, Tammy says, holding Echinacea to her shoulder while she speaks urgently to Cal. But don't you think, even a little bit, that he's right about Fortuna being too dangerous? Cal crosses his arms and shakes his head. Killing is never right, Tammy, he replies. We can't fight a whole planet. If we meet violence with violence, it's just numbers. They're going to win. We have to find a better way or we're all going to die anyway. Tammy's chin wobbles, but she clenches it defiantly. I just want to have a family, Cal, she insists. Why can't we have one place on this awful planet where we can be safe? She adjusts Echinacea against her chest. I, I think it's worth defending this one space for ourselves. The monsters can live elsewhere, just not here. Cal's right, all killing is wrong. Cal nods, grateful for the backup, and Tammy sighs. I guess, she says hesitantly, I just want Echinacea to grow up somewhere safe, like we did. A peal of laughter rises from where Rex and Nomi are playing with what looks like a competitive slapping game. Rex rubs his reddened cheek and ruefully as Nomi rolls around on their back, kicking their legs in the air and giggling. Got you! I got you good! Too slow! Too slow! They stop and beckon you over. Come here, Yabby! They say. Promise we're not even talking about the war, even a little bit! You take your seat behind Rex and Nomi, and Rex claps you on the back. Well, we are a little bit, he confides. 
Mostly we're making fun of those guys. He jerks his thumb towards Vase and his group of friends who've wrangled themselves a live trippet and are skewering it to roast on a bonfire. You can hear its dying squeals from here, and as night falls, smell the sweet charred scent of it cooking. They've always been like this, Nomi shakes their head. Just like total human supremacists. See something you don't understand? Nomi makes laser guns with their fingers. Pew pew, all gone. Want something someone else has? Pew pew, all yours. They lean back on their hands and look up at the night sky. In dust, the wormhole looks so peaceful and far away. I used to think me and Rex were like changelings, like aliens beamed in and replaced two human babies with weirdos. The dancing and feasting continues well into the night while you pass the time with your friends in the peaceful faction. Knowing that the whole colony isn't into being soldiers and fighting Lum's war on nature makes you feel less alone. But you can't stop thinking about the governor's eyes as he crushed Utopia's hand today. So long as he's in charge, does it matter what anyone else wants? The week after Vertumnali is one of the hottest since you've landed. You're supposed to take time off for a much needed break, but it's just so humid and awful, and tempers are short. Shortly after the festival, you start seeing graffiti cropping up everywhere. It seems that a lively, if not particularly civil, conversation between the two factions is being held on the flat surfaces of the colony. Lum announces a zero-tolerance policy for political graffiti, but you notice that not every tag is being removed, just the ones against the war, of course. The atmosphere of the colony is oppressive, as thick as the choking dust heat itself. Everywhere you try to relax, people just want to talk about the war. To make matters worse, the sweltering nights are making your nightmares intense again. You return to work feeling more stressed than before. Ugh. Everything's falling apart. We gotta fall apart more. We've gotta take this colony and destroy it and build it back up again. But in a good way. With a coup. You're hanging out with Mars when you hear shouting, and Governor Lum comes storming out of command and stalks towards the garrison. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> no! <laughs> I just put up new foam on my walls and it's falling! <laughs> All my hard work gone to waste. Oh, why? Oh, no. Oh, no. You were fine for like a half hour. Why are you falling? Bad, 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 bad. You're hanging out with Mars when you hear shouting, and Governor Lum comes storming out of command and stalks over to the garrison. Administrator Seek is hot on his heels trying to get a word in. You can't hear what they're saying, but Lum looks ready to take it out on someone. Mars pulls you aside. Looks, look, he's going off again, she says, rolling her eyes. I can't believe he actually makes me miss Governor Uticott. He's like this all the time, she continues. It's like he's never actually been in command before. He has charisma, but the moment something goes wrong, she gestures to where Lum and Rhett are having a heated conversation outside the garrison. When he's defensive, he gets offensive. Literally. Yeah, I know, we just saw that. He crushed Utopia's hand. It's a canon event, unfortunately. Oh! That's new! That was never there before! Um, I kind of want to touch it, but I'm not going to touch it because we're letting Mars become the governor because this is our final run and she deserves it. I dreamed you were the governor. Mars listens while you recount your dream, then grabs you by the shoulders. OMG, Yavi! I didn't think anyone else felt the same about Lum. What if... what if we did something about it? You don't know how to say you're certain you already have at least once, so you hold your tongue. Looking around to make sure no one is listening, she pulls you a little closer. I have to let you in on a secret. I'm already working on it. I wasn't ready to bring it up to the rest of the SFC yet, but... I've been thinking, if the club can convince enough council members that Lum is bad news, we can actually remove him from power. Yes, I agree! It's time for an emergency meeting of the SFC. She grabs your hand and grins. Hurry up, I'm not going to let you miss this. Mars calls this meeting of the SFC to order with a grim expression. I cannot just stand by while Governor Lum ruins everything we've built here, she says, clenching her fist on the table. He might know how to hold a gun, but he doesn't know how to lead a colony. From now on, this club is going to focus on getting Governor Lum out of power and getting someone competent in. We have from now until Vertumnalia to somehow convince the other council members that he's gotta go. I agree, Cal says, and everyone turns to him in surprise. What? He continues defensively. Lum's a jerk. All he cares about is killing animals. It's better for the whole planet if he's gone. Mars steeples her fingers. But the question is... Who could we get to replace him? Obviously, I think I'm a great candidate, but I'm willing to consider other options. 
Tammy immediately gives her support for Mars. I agree. It should be Mars. Cal looks worried. No offense, Mars, but are you really going to stop the soldiers from killing the animals? Look, Cal, Mars says, spreading her hands wide. I don't want hunters going out and not coming back either. Maybe we can find a safer, more efficient way to deal with the animals, yeah? Sounds ominous. Cal doesn't look convinced. Nomi exchanges a look with Rex, then clears their throat. We support you, Mars. We think you'll be a great governor. But, Nomi continues, tracing their fingers idly over the tabletop. Um, you're gonna keep it so that the colony is fair and everyone has what they need, right? I like that we don't have to compete for stuff and everyone gets the same treatment. Of course, Mars says. Look, I learned from history, okay? We can't let income inequality tear this place apart like it did on Earth. There's gotta be a way to grow, together. She shoots you a grin. Right, Yabby? Just like we talked about. Mars gathers everyone close. So the plan is, we campaign in all the departments. Geophonics, engineering, the garrison, the quarters, explorations, and here in command. Try to soften up all six council members and get them on our side. Try to keep this on the down low. Then, at the next Fertumnalia festival, we surprise the governor with a spontaneous council vote and replace him. He'll never see it coming. Aw, oh, yeah. Then we'll get started. I don't need a break soon. I need to coo. I gotta double check. Does anyone have a birthday? You're at a hundred. 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 A hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. What about you? Early pollen. Already passed. Mid dust. So you have a birthday. Question mark. Oh, mid wet. Okay. So it is Nomi. And I think Nomi wants to talk to me too. You do. What's up, Nomi? You enter the lounge to find Nomi curled up in one of the long, larger chairs, fast asleep. Their hollow palm is still open. Huh. Gently wake them up? No. No, not falling again! Stop it! I put you up like three times now! Double-sided tape my ass! You tap Nomi on the shoulder and they blink awake, frowning as they rub the sleep drool from their cheek. So, what? They mumble. What happened? Oh, hey you! They say, stretching their arms and legs and settling into a more comfortable position. I guess I fell asleep while working on my hollow novel. They frown again and poke listlessly at their hollow screen. I just closed my eyes for a cool nanosec. Guess I was more zonked out than I thought. There's just so much to write still. Feels like it'll be never be done. Is there anything I could do to help? Well... Nomi starts, dragging their fingers to scroll through the lines of script on their hollow screen. See, the thing is... I'm too tired to get any good work done, but if, I snot, if I'm not working, I just feel guilty. So I don't let myself do anything actually fun because I should be writing. They flick their fingers together so the text scrolls faster, then put their chin in their hands. So I end up just staring at my hollow palm and chatting with people because it's all I have the energy for, which doesn't make me feel any better. And then I just feel more guilty because I wasted all that time. Executive dysfunction, I know it well. Um, how about a game instead? Oh, yeah, okay, Nomi says, swipes around on their hollow screen until they bring up a list of games. That'll recharge my brain. Wait, I have a better idea. You look over Nomi's shoulders and spy the dusty stack of board games. You get up and pluck one from the stack. Gosh, you remember playing this one in the crash. Nomi looks dubious when you bring it back, but you notice Mars is looking over with curiosity. Is that Twister? Mars demands, snatching it from your hands. No way, this was my favorite. I did not even know we still had it. OMG, we are playing this right now. No questions. You're, you take turns being the spinner, directing the other two to contort their bodies in strange positions. Mars is a vicious competitor, forcing you and Nomi to bend in ways that border on obscene while she cackles. You're taking your turn as spinner when you see Nomi's arms start to shake and a mischievous grin start to spread across their face. On their next move, they contrive to just happen to be in the right position so that when they fall, they take Mars down with them. Oof, Mars explains, while laughing while she extricates herself from the tango of limbs. Well played, Nomi. I do believe we can call that one a draw. She reaches over and pinches Nomi's cheek. Oh, you are such a darling one, aren't you? She coos. I simply cannot wait to see what you do with that hollow novel of yours. We do so need your particular flavor of brilliance in this compost heap of a colony. Nomi rubs their cheek and looks up at Mars with big eyes. R really? You're not just saying that? 
Of course not, precious thing, Mars says, getting to her feet. Do I look like someone who says things unnecessarily? Have a bit more faith in me, if not yourself. You and Nomi both watch Mars sashay away, and Nomi looks over at you in awe. Can you believe it? They breathe, still rubbing their cheek. I feel like I've just been visited by royalty. Nomi leaps to their feet and spins around, arms outstretched. Wah! I feel so refreshed from moving my body and being with friends. I feel like I could punch the suns. I'm going to get back to working on my holo novel right away. Mars is waiting for it. Do your best. Nomi laughs and shoots you a double peace sign. Thanks, I will. Yeah, and also it's your birthday. I hope this magical crystal can help in your creative endeavors. Ninety-six, ninety-two, eighty-eight. Oh, there's no way we're not gonna get to freaking everybody. Everybody's gonna be at a hundred. I'm excited for that. But I know we were gonna start the coup today. Well, technically we did. But I think we're gonna stop it here because since I will be talking through everything next time, I want to make that its own video where we convince everybody. So we'll wait on that, uh, and we'll probably also reach a hundred friendship with, if not Rex and Vase, at least Nomi Nomi. So that'll be another thing to do. We're gonna have to play through their Hollow novel, which I'm excited for. I loved playing through it when we were doing their route, and hopefully Rex and Nomi's romance route will pop up soon. I don't know why it hasn't popped up yet, but I hope it can. Hang on. What's up? Oh! You're surprised by Mars's soft hands covering your eyes. Yabby, she croons. Come with me. I have a surprise for you. Giggling, Mars leads you to your bedroom and removes her hand from your eyes. Still giggling, she gestures to a canvas-covered easel in the middle of your bedroom. Ta-da! A present? For me? Aw, Mars! Mars grabs the canvas and pulls it away from the easel with a dramatic flourish. In the painting, Mars is standing atop a mountain, raising her fists to the sky as lightning crashes around her. In her other hand, she is grab grasping a flag and blazoned with the logo of the SFC. You're there as well, standing just below her and brandishing a laser pistol you know for a fact is far too cool for the likes of the Colony Defense Corp. Mars sees you eyeing the flag. We'll get him one day, she promises. He can't be governor forever. Mars runs her finger down the painting's elegant frame. It looks like real wood, not nanoprint. I commissioned this from Nomi, she says, like a genuine patron of the arts. Might be the first piece of fine art ever created on this boring rock. What do you think? It's beautiful, thank you. Mars smiles. Of course, darling. Only the best for you. Mars folds the canvas and sets it aside, then sits down on your bed. She bids you to come sit next to her and takes her hand in yours. I just wanted to do something to thank you for everything you've done for me, she says. No one else, there's no one else I'd trust by my side right now, she continues, squeezing your hands. Lum's days and powers are numbered, and he knows it. I promise he'll keep you on your toes. I expect nothing less, Mars, Mars replies. She seems genuinely sincere. The problem with people in power is that no one has the guts to stand up to them and tell them when they're wrong. You talk for hours about your lives and plans for the future, then as the yellow afternoon sun sets, the two of you step out to your balcony to watch the colony grounds. Mars pulls a glass bottle from where she's hidden it under your bed. It's no 1945 Chateau Morton Rothschild, she says, uncapping the nano-printed bottle with a satisfying poop. But it'll do. You pour what's left of your canteen into the nearby potted plant, and Mars fills it with fermented mushroom wine. Cheers to us, she says, clinking the bottle with your canteen. Together, there's nothing we can't do! No! The only thing I can't do is keep these foams on the walls! Mars, help me! What just fell on me again? Alright, well, as I was saying before I got assaulted by my own foam wall padding, um, this is where we're gonna end it for today. Next time, we are going to go through each council member and get that coup going. We already know we have some advantages. I know we can talk Rex out- or, not Rex, we can talk Rhett out of it. I believe we can talk Utopia out of it. We can hopefully get our mom on our side, but everyone else we're gonna have to do a little bit of convincing, including our mom, actually. Um, oh, and we don't have to spend a hundred kudos because we saved the governor, so Seek can't try and, uh, rob us through bribery, and they think they can be governor when they're already corrupt like that. Whatever, Seek. But we'll have to do all of that, like I said, next time. Until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourselves, don't cheap out on double-sided tape, and have a good day.